So welcome to the Catholic Sportsman Show. And we always start with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we just thank you for bringing Ben Steele here today as our guest to talk about sports and our faith, which is what we're all about here at the Catholic Sportsman. And we just ask the Holy Spirit to come down upon us in our conversation. And we always ask Our Lady's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, of God pray, pray for us sinners now, now and, and at our death. 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 Amen. Amen. Saint Sebastian, patron saint of Christian athletes. Pray for us. Blessed Carlo Acutis. Pray for us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, Randy. Well, I'm excited about uh, introducing our guest, Ben Steele, today. Uh, ben is the assistant uh, offensive line coach uh, for the Denver Broncos, and uh, he has a family and is now in Denver again with um, his wife and uh, soon to be four kids moving. And um, he's also a player from his NFL days also. So, Ben, uh, we are so excited to have you on the Catholic Sportsman Show. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Paul, Randy, for having me on. Uh, honored and, and blessed uh, to be here. Oh, great. Yeah, we always have a lot of fun. And uh, we just want to kick things off here and um, just kind of open things up and just talk about the, the background of your life, our two favorite things, the intersection of faith, our Catholic faith, and sports. <laughs> yep. Uh, as we talked about earlier, two of my, my uh, biggest passions, for sure. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm from Colorado originally, so um, it's good to be back home. It was it was tough for my family when I was playing for the Raiders growing up, a, a Broncos fan for them to root for the Raiders, but uh, mm -hmm. um, they were happy to do so and they got tickets to the Super Bowl. But um, so, anyways, it's good to be home and, and to be back closer to uh, to my family. But um, yeah, so you know, obviously, I was you know, from here and I was born and raised a Catholic. Um, and, you know, I, I, I grew up doing all sorts of things from snowboarding to all the sports. And, um, you know, there was never anything that I didn't want to try to do. Um, just because it's, to me, that was a way for, for me to, to experience a new, um, well, there's a little lights, light dimming action in the old line room, but they're motion censored. So, um, <laughs> But, uh, so anyways, there we go. Um, so yeah, so, you know, and, and, you know, for me, and I think this is the number one thing is for being, you know, uh, Catholic and, and strong in your faith is that it, you're always growing in your faith. And that's, you know, that's an old, uh, cliche that, that football coaches use is, you know, you either get better or you get worse. You never stay the same. Um, so and that was true for me in my faith, like growing up in the Catholic church, like there were definitely times that, you know, and, and I see it now with my kids, like it's, I'm trying to just to make sure that they're not screaming the whole time during mass, just so mm -hmm. it doesn't ruin it for everybody else. But, um, but, you know, I, I definitely remember just kind of maybe just going through the motions at times growing up and daydreaming in church and, you know, just not really, um, I guess, being involved and being where my feet are and truly ex accepting the, the, the mass as it, as it's intended. So, um, and that was part of the growth. And I think that's part of the growth for everybody, especially when they're younger, but, um, you know, and I even, as I went to college, you know, I, I got a scholarship to play college football and I wanted to go, all my friends were going to, uh, to Vail to be ski bums for a year. And then we'd go to college and my mom nixed that real fast. So, 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 uh, so I went to college and, and, you know, I, I was a you know, regular, um, attendee of mass and, and, you know, it's just, there's, there was also some, maybe some questions I had or not even just questions, but curiosity and, you know, some friends and I might've, you know, went to a couple non-denominational churches and kind of, you know, experience that. And, um, if anything that helped me 
me even more grounded back into my my Catholic faith. Um, and I think that's, you know, a really a, a testament of, of the foundation of what what the Catholic Church meant and how I was raised for it to, to mean. Um, and I didn't get that same feeling where, um, you know, that's one of the, uh, one of the priests that, that I've uh, listened to quite a bit, he kind of worded it pretty good. It was, you know, th there was no uh, opinion poll or, or um, you know, Jesus didn't say, here's what I believe, do whatever you want to do or choose mm -hmm. for yourself. Like there, there's no, there wasn't, there wasn't a choice. Like this is, this is what it is. And this is what we believe. And um, to me, that was, you know, obviously, you know, the rock that the, the church was founded on, um, you know, directly relates back to Christ himself is the Catholic church. And so to me, that was, it was easily a process by, you know, by elimination of, of, you know, what I felt like, you know, the Eucharist truly meant to me of, um, you know, well, like, like Jesus said, whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life like that. To me, you don't, you don't get that same experience. And um, if anything, kind of my experiences just helped me be a little more grounded in my faith. Um, and, you know, and there's discipline in your faith. Like, like, like I said, like you're, you're always growing um, in it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not definitely, I'm not a perfect Catholic. And, you know, to me, it's, it's a daily battle of, um, you know, trying to be and uh, going through the, the adversity. And, and a lot of that really helped me as an athlete because of just the similarities between the struggles that you go through, even like in any given game or, or, um, you know, just, you know, I can't even, I can't remember how many times I've been cut when I was hmm. playing in the NFL, but, um, you know, so that, that to me was, you know, kind of how I got to be uh, even just more uh, grounded and more focused on what I truly wanted to be as, as a, as a, as a father and a um, husband and, you know, brother, son, and, and, be strong in my faith and representing that. So, um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, it, it made me a better person too, because it was something that, um, you know, I could, uh, have the foundation for, um, you know, uh, how to, how to truly act and, and, um, develop relationships with people. And so, you know, I'll, I'll never, um, you know, take for granted the experiences that sports have played, but, uh, my faith probably had more of an influence on on my success as as an athlete and and even as a coach and um, will be until the day I die. I have no question about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because as Catholics, we we never give up. We always have to keep trying, like you say. But that's so yeah. true. With, as an athlete, we just hang in there and keep fighting. So true. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know we spoke a minute before about my. You know, my mom um, and my granny were obviously huge influences on me and as, you know, raising me Catholic and, um, you know, I, at whatever time, however many times that I was, was cut by a team, that would be one of the first things I would, I would go visit my granny and, and uh, she always have something for me like the, you know, you got to play the, pray the rosary or um, um, she said, you know, when, when, when God closes a door, he opens a window. I'm like, he doesn't want me to jump out the window though. Right. So she's <laughs> yes. pretty clear, but she, here. she was awesome uh, in that respect for sure. You've been with many pro football teams as a player and a coach, like you were saying, even went to the Super Bowl as a player with the Raiders. What are some similarities and differences between teams? Yeah. Yeah. Randy, that's a good, that's a good uh, question and, and kind of reflection too, for me, like, um, like I'm, I'm so blessed to have had the opportunities that I've had that football has given me, um, you know, and all the different relationships that I've built throughout the years. And, you know, I've got to see the world and travel the world and, and, and really develop 
you know, close relationships with uh, my teammates and, and, you know, my coworkers as a coach deeper than, 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 um, you know, a lot of different experiences, just, you know, especially, you know, as a player, but even more so as a coach, like we spend so much time in the office and, and just, it's, you know, especially during the course of the season, like it's, it's not, um, it's not abnormal for us to be in the office at five and not leave till 11, you know? So like, so, you know, I'm during the season, I end up spending more time with, with my coworkers than I do with my family, which is, which is not ideal, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not in Afghanistan or in Ukraine. So we, you know, that's definitely one thing that we keep in perspective. Like I, I'm coaching football and, um, you know, so it's, but the, you know, that, that to me is like the number one thing that I take away is, is the relationships I'm able to build. And, and it's not just like, um, you know, it's not, they're not superficial. Like it's the, these people I've spent so much time with and it's kind of not, not, you know, ideal or, or um, you know, for you to spend, you know, get to know these people as close friends and almost family, like family. And then, you know, two years later or three years later, you know, you'll be moving and then you might not see him. So, but those, those people that you've to keep in touch with. Um, and then, you know, I think my experience and the differences between these different teams was definitely the relationships. And, you know, I know I, I keep saying that as, as a buzzword, but to me, that's the difference between um, successful teams and teams that, might not might have a lot of good players and you don't see the results that they should have. Um, you know, another coaching cliche and I've got all of them. So I'll, I'll say mm-hmm. them all to you guys through the course of this, I'm sure. But, that, that is okay. but, um, but uh, you know, one of the, one of the, the cliches is uh, will beat skill when skill won't work. Right. So, um, you know, that's that to me, that's kind of the epitome of, epitome of my career like you know I was I was a I was a good athlete but I definitely wasn't the best and uh, I literally uh, made a career out of just working harder and you know trying to outwork uh, my competition so um, you know that that is like in a nutshell how teams bond and how teams can you know come together through you know, their connection and it's, and it's not just through football and, and, um, you know, the, the locker room is a, is a special place, especially, you know, I grew up in a, in a rural community. And, um, so, you know, people from all walks of life are together and then we're supposed to be, uh, as close as we can be, um, you know, to, to be a team. And so to do that, you, you got to open up and you got to be vulnerable at times and, um, you know, we definitely, there are definitely times that we shared our faith. We obviously, we go to mass together. Um, you know, there are times where, where I couldn't go home and I'm spending Christmas with, you know, my teammates or my coaches or Easter or whatever it is, um, just because of the travel and the logistics of everything. But, um, you know, and that, that's one thing that I, I think was, was pretty big with that Raiders team is, you know, there was a lot of talent on that team. And um, some people have called it the, the all tech mobile team. Like this, we had so many, you know, good players on the team. Um, But it really wouldn't have mattered as much if we didn't have some kind of connection and, um, you know, bond that was bigger than, okay, I just got to get mine as long as I carry the ball or I catch these many or, and, you know, that does come up and, and I will say this, I, I, it would be, it would be pretty uh, unrealistic if uh, a really good player like Jerry Rice didn't want the ball. So, Mm -hmm. you you know, you want those guys to, to want the ball, but um, you know, at the same time, we got to put the team first. And and I think that's the difference between the good teams that I've been with and the teams that we've kind of, um, you know, not achieved expectations and, and it's always to win the championship and, and don't get me wrong. Um, good players definitely help that, but, 
you got to you got to come together as one. Well, congratulations on your your new team, and this is super exciting and no doubt a lot of work. But uh, you have a new coach, you have a new uh, staff, and you have a new quarterback at Denver. Um, what are the you know the challenges that you're facing this year, and uh, what are the opportunities that you're also exploring? Yeah. Um, shoot, I, this is, this has been a, a, such a, um, great experience so far. Just, you know, I, I've had relationships and, and that's kind of, it's, it's, it's a small world in the coaching profession. So, um, you know, the, the people that we have on staff, a lot of them, some of them I've worked with recently, some of them I worked with a couple of years ago, some of them are really close friends and family. Um, so, that that was obviously comforting um you know it actually is is kind of ironic i actually played against coach hackett my senior year of college he was at uc davis and um and i was at mesa state and we played him my last game um in the playoffs and i I won't bring up the score but um (laughs) but uh it, it wasn't it wasn't good for for the uh mason mavericks but um so and and our uh, you know our outside linebacker coach, his brother was on that team. You know a lot of UC Davis ties. Ties. Um, Drew Evero um, was a Davis guy. So yeah, there's there's already a, a connection um, between the staff, and you know we've just started to get to know the players, and that's kind of always you know the 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 the, the thing that you want to try to get rolling as fast as possible. Um, for a team, you know, to gel and to, to bond, um, you know, signing Russell Wilson helps. He's an unbelievable player and, and uh, we're a lot better coaches after uh, we got, <laughs> we signed Russell Wilson. So, um, and, and he's done an amazing job of, of uh, getting our players together and, you know, starting that bond. Um, you know, he had him out to his house in San Diego and, and um had you know did some throwing and and stuff so you know next week will be awesome for us to get out on the field for the first time you know and we can kind of go through our our installs and our new playbook um but really it's it's all about the process and i you know i know a lot of football coaches say that you gotta you know trust the process but but it is a process and and the quicker we get that together and we get on the same page and Um, we get to know each other, you know, more than just as, you know, football coach, football player, um, on a personal level. And, and that's going to be the difference between how, how fast we can get that done. Um, and then that next comes, you know, the trust starts to buy, they start to buy in and then it becomes a, um, you know, an execution. And then we were, we were able to have those uncomfortable conversations that not are not personal. They are just, Hey, this is how we need to do it. And it doesn't need to be a yell fest and, you know, and, and guys know that you have their best interests in mind. So they're going to, you know, not be offended and it's going to be a a place where you can grow rather than be bitter. And, you know, maybe just maybe not accept, you know, little coaching points that come up through on the way, but it's, it's started fast and, and I like where it's headed. So it's, it's exciting. Awesome. But probably one of the challenges too, is just, it's new, right? All these processes are new and everyone has to digest them so they don't have to think about them. They can just execute. Exactly. And, and it's, you know, as a staff, we had to come together and, you know, learn the offense together because it's all, it's, you know, in defense, because it's new for all of us. Like not everyone was together and knew exactly, you know, how the vision of coach Hackett, um, what, what that looks like. So the faster we could bond together and, you know, we, we do staff outings and, um, you know, we're a young staff, which this is one thing that I've never seen before in any staff. Uh, our entire coaching staff works out at, at 6 a.m. similar to what the players do. Our strength coaches put us through a workout, and it's definitely uh, easier 
than than some days but um you know just to be there and we're we're connecting um and you know pushing through the workouts and so we're we're uh we're definitely bonding through that process as well as getting to know exactly how this you know is supposed to look and um how to how to get that message to our players as fast as possible is it difficult to be a committed Catholic when you're on the road so much and away from your family? And are there many fellow Catholics in the NFL? Well, there's there's never enough, in my opinion. But but uh, <laughs> there there are uh, there are a lot of Catholics in the NFL, and it's and it's and it's an awesome way to develop that community. You know, outside of just football, we obviously have the. Um, you know, the same common bond with what we do as a profession, but not necessarily what defines us as a person. Um, so, um, and, you know, and when we're on the road a lot, we have um, uh, mass, every team that I've ever been on has, has a, a team priest. Um, a lot of them travel with the team and do our mass at home and then do, our mass on the road. Um, so wherever we go, if not, um, there's, we usually have a, a local priest in the area come and, and do mass, uh, with the team and it's coaches and players. And, and, you know, we've, we've, uh, there's, there's definitely, um, a lot of good, really good Catholics in, in the NFL and, and, you know, and I'm not surprised when, when I see who they are, like when they're on the first team that you're with and um, you see who walks in the room and it's, it's a really cool, you know, place for us to be away from football, but um, you know, bond as Catholics. And um, you know, last year when I was with the Vikings last year, uh, we had a, we, we even had a we had a Bible study we, that we did together oh, with their group on on uh, Friday mornings, and um, you know it was it was just it was obviously a different you know experience throughout the COVID thing, um, the the lockdown and all the the regulations that we had during that. But but yeah, there's that's it's always available, and and we usually have. Um, you know, Sundays off, obviously during the season, we're playing games, but during uh, training camp and, you know, the off season, have the chance to go to mass with your families and, and on the road, we, we'll, we'll get together with, with our team priest, which is, which is another awesome thing about, um, about that is, you know, it's an extra resource for you as a coach to have instant access to a priest in your building um, for confession, for, um, you know, blessing my rosaries. Um, so, uh, so it, it's, it's really cool to, to have that and awesome that, that it's not something that needs to be negotiated. Yeah. What a blessing to have that, that relationship, like you said, with the priest right there, you have the sacraments and mass and you can run things by him and yeah. Um, so when you um, step onto the coaching arena, um, you bring your personal philosophy, obviously your faith and all of your values. Um, what, what is your the way you like to approach the players and, and the, the whole game? Yeah, you know, I was I've obviously you could say you could say I wasn't as fortunate because I had to go play for so many different teams, or I was because. I got, I keep getting opportunities, but either way, uh, I see it as, as being a, um, a blessing for me to get to experience different coaching styles and then coach with different teams and, um, and really find out, you know, there's definitely some good things that I've learned from a lot of coaches, a ton of good things. And there's also things that I'm going to steer away from, and that's not necessarily my style or, or how I want to uh, coach. Um, so, my, you know, my general philosophy is I want to coach, um, the way that I would like to be coached as a player. And to me, you know, and, and everybody's a little bit different, especially nowadays, you know, 
there, there's a lot more, um, you know, going on for, for young adults and, and kids that, you know, have all these different ways to learn things. So the, the old school of just sitting in the room for three hours doesn't really resonate all the time. So, um, you know, to me, it's how can I connect with that player uh, on a personal level first and foremost, because I, I, I do believe um, that, you know, once a player knows that you, that you care about him other than just what they can do on the football field um, and they believe that you can help them as a player, it's you, you have so much rapport with them that you can coach them harder and it's not going to affect the relationship. And I, and I will never um, overstep that boundary because I don't think there's a, really a place for it. And everybody is different. Everyone has different coaching styles and I'm not trying to be anybody other than myself. Um, I've tried that before. It doesn't work. And so, you know, my style is, is we develop that connection and, and it helps me get to know exactly how they learn because at the end of the day, coaches are teachers. They try to get players to understand exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it. And then how I've always, what I've always said is, you know, there's a difference between knowing what to do and how to do it and versus know and know, you know, how to do it. Um, because, you know, a lot of times guys will, will get swayed one way or another and second guess themselves. And there's, there's indecision. And, um, my, uh, my brother is a, who's a high school coach here in Colorado. He, he gave me another cliche of every time a player thinks we lose five yards. So we're, we're trying to eliminate all thinking and just let them play fast. And then the way to do that is, is to make sure they know and know they know. So, um, and, Again, that's that's the bond that's created to where I know exactly how this person um, responds to coaching and what type of coaching he needs, and then you know we we go from there on on if it's working or not. But um, yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of an individual basis for one player to the next because I, I do think everybody learns differently, and um, you know you can coach some guys harder than others. And some guys, you, you've got to, you know, paint the picture a little different for them. And, and that's fine. That's, that's awesome. That's what makes them, you know, them. Right. What's interesting too, is that um, in an offensive line, you're talking about trusting the process, whether it's at football or at the office, everyone has to have a process, but especially in an offensive line, you really have to have that cohesion and trust. And the quarterback actually has to trust the line that he know he's they're there and he can focus on who he's looking at downfield right exactly and that's I mean I can't imagine being a quarterback and seeing Roquan Smith or some you know 250 <laughs> pound linebacker just running full speed in this open gap and then just trusting that someone's going to show up and block the guy like yeah <laughs> I think there's a reason why those guys get paid a lot of money but um you know, the other, the other thing about, about coaching and, and I think is really one thing that I learned from Dan Quinn, um, who was the head coach of the Falcons when I was there, um, you know, a lot of times what people want to do is they, even with, you know, evaluating players for their draft or even just your own players in, in the building, it's so easy to try to, to look at what they can't do versus what they can do. So, uh, and when you do that, you, you start to be able to put them in positions to be successful rather than they can't do this. So we need to replace them, but okay. The other person might have an other deficiency. So, um, you know, that, that is something that I honestly truly believe in. Like, you know, I, that, that for me as a player was something that, you know, a lot of offensive guys, you know, for the most part, majority of defensive guys on special teams. Well, I knew if I played special teams, I'd have a much better chance to make the team. So I didn't, I've never, didn't know how to do it. Didn't ever do it, but I told our coaches, I do that the best. And I found a niche that kept me employed uh, as a player because I, I played special teams and it could have been, okay, he's, you know, I'm not, wasn't maybe not as good as, uh, blocking, you know, Michael Strahan or, you know, whoever it was, but 
it it created a, a, a spot for me to highlight, you know, what I could do and what what value I added to the team, um, you know, and versus okay, this player can't can't do this, and, and it's it's literally almost a uh, um, you know a little bit of a, a correlation to how you know people look at other people and just in society in general as far as you know being quick to judge somebody versus um you know what what good does this person offer to me and how can i be a resource or how can i help them or be uh you know a, a shoulder to lean on if if need be so you know that that to me just resonated because it it goes above just canceling things out when when you've got one issue or another yeah, that's really the genius of coaching is taking your talent and just using that of the of the player and just moving people around. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like Paul said, it's 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 earning the trust of the players to trust you to to help them learn and not get hurt and and learn to learn the program and kind of buy into what you're teaching them. Yeah, exactly. And, and you said it the best, Randy, it, it's a trust factor. And, and when you don't have that, and you could, you could say that about any relationship that you have, um, you know, tr- trust is, is big. It was, is it was huge. Um, and it, it, it makes all the difference in my opinion. Well, Ben, uh, we we had heard a lot about your uh, rosaries, and yeah. um, just wanted to understand, uh, you know, the devotion to your rosary, uh, Saint Michael the Archangel, and all the saints, and yeah, tell us all about it. Yeah, it's um, man, it kind of it really started, um, and I, I guess I kind of got the idea when um, our team priest for the Falcons, Father Peak. Um, he was about to be deployed with the reserves to, I think he went to Afghanistan. It was Afghanistan. So this was right before, right at the end of the 2019 season. So, Hmm. um, so he gave everyone at mass, you know, this rosary and it was like the coolest rosary I've ever seen in my life. It was this, (laughs) you know, rugged, like manly, like I, I just, all the rosaries that I've had have been, you know, like my, my granny's, you know, pink one that, that, you know, is her favorite from, it's probably a hundred years old, but, but, um, but it was, it was just, it was so cool and, and manly. And, and to me, that was like, that, that fired me up. And, um, you know, so I, I, I kind of got the idea after that, you know, we kind of roll into 2020, the whole lockdown, year and and it was really frustrating for me and and hard to you know kind of understand that you know that I could go buy a beer at the liquor store but I couldn't go at a mass so that Hmm. you know so that that was that was hard for me for sure and I just I just thought you know I, I had to do I had to do something to keep my mind on my faith but then I also um you know thought this was a way for me to you know spread my faith and, and, you know, the, the power of, of, of saying the rosary to, you know, my close friends and, and family. Um, and, you know, originally, I guess when I was, uh, in high school and in college, our athletic director, who's, was, uh, you know, a family friend that was, you know, at my parish growing up, um, Jim Selkie, he, he would make rosaries for me for, you know, he made me a rosary for my high school team, his high school colors, college team. So I got a, I got a hundred rosaries that, mm-hmm. that Jim Selke made me for, you know, all these different places that I've been. Um, and, cool. and they were so cool. And I, and I just thought that that was, you know, another way of, of, uh, of spreading your faith and spreading um, the power of, of the, of the rosary prayer itself. And, you know, it, it, it's always kind of been, I guess it hasn't always been to, 
um, anyone but myself, but it was not something that was as, um, you know, as manly as getting this rosary that's got these big beads and it's strong. It's made of this parachute cord that I literally could hang like mm. from uh, anywhere and it will support my weight. Um, I've put on a few pounds. I, it might be stressing it, but it's going <laughs> to, you know, it's that to me is, is a little bit of a, uh, you know, it just a correlation to how powerful that prayer is. And this rosary to me, it, it sends a message to, um, um, you know, as you pray that like, this is, this is strength in itself. But I know that I, I said this before that, that the Padre Pio quote of, of, as is, you know, claiming his rosary is his weapon, um, is, you know, is spot on. And, and it's, it's a battle and a, and a war every day as a, as a Catholic. And, um, you know, why, why wouldn't you have the strongest rosary to, to protect you and, and guide you? So, that's kind of where it started. And they, um, there's a company that makes them, I think it's rugged rosaries, um, mm-hmm. but they make them and sell them and they're, they're awesome. But, uh, you know, my, mine aren't maybe not made quite as, as, as clean, but they're definitely strong. I make sure of that cause I test every one of them out, but they, mm. uh, you know, they, it's a little bit of, a uh, you know, a personal item for me to, you know, give to, you know, close friends and family that, that sends a message of how much that means to me and how much it can, can help, um, you know, our, our faith and grow as, as a Catholic. And you also mentioned too, um, I read that you, you, when it's really stressful, right? When everything's going crazy, you just go in your office, like to pray that and get peace and quiet. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, um, that definitely is, is very, uh, you know, people, people talk about, um, all these life hacks, you know, like that, that's a, that's a, a hack that, that people need to divulge into a little bit more because it's, it is intentional and it, and it does, um, you know, create this, this sense of, uh, you know, devotion to mother Mary and, and, going through the, um, you know, the, the, each prayers of of the rosary itself and kind of just spending time to clear your head. And, and, you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, doubt for a second that it's, it's probably one of the most prayer or powerful prayers that, that, uh, our Catholic faith has. And, um, you know, and I, I kind of started doing that as a player and it was more to, um, kind of, maybe get my mind to stop thinking when we would be running wind sprints and I hated running so much. So I would like just start saying these prayers that my, you know, my mom, my granny taught me and, and it would make the time go by so much faster. Cause I was not focused on how tired I was. I was, I was focused on being grateful. And um, so, you know, that, that is something that as, you know, especially with the hours that we work, it's a, it's, it's a time to, for reflection and for me to, you know, to really devote that, um, prayer to, you know, whatever my intention is at the, at the time, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. And it's, and I've definitely grown, like I've, that's something that I've, that, you know, as a family, we, we've started praying that and we haven't always done that. My wife is is awesome about that, um, reminding us, you know, like, hey, you know, we'll be on a long road trip, and hey, let's you want to say the uh, rosary or or um, so we say it as a family, and uh, my kids are awesome too because they they're in Catholic school, and you know, I, I never really learned Latin, so they they know Hail Mary in Latin, so I'm like, so every every time I took them to school, they they're teaching me the uh, you know Latin um, version of the Hail Mary. So it's, it's, it's something that you can, you definitely use as, as a a way to bring everyone together and and be stronger in our faith. So it's, 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 it's kind of, it's crazy how much it's changed my life for, for a lot of different reasons. Um, and, you know, and I'm still growing and, and getting better at that too. So. Well, how beautiful to, uh, 
witness and for passing out the rosaries, what a gift also. And, and to do it as a family, that's fantastic. So Ben, thank you so much for spending time uh, in the midst of all your preparations for the season. Randy and I wish you the best. We're looking forward to following the Broncos this year. Yeah. And how well time. you guys do. And uh, so we, we just want to like kind of give you a chance here at the end. Um, is there anything you'd like to share, like you know, words of encouragement to anyone out there as far as getting ready for you know, today and tomorrow and the rest of our lives in our, in our faith? Um, <clears throat> you know, I think one thing to think about, and this, this is something that I kind of think about too, is it's, it's, it's okay not to be perfect in your faith. And as long as you're growing to get better at it, um, because I think sometimes that turns people away at times and, you know, then it turns into, I'm just going to go to mass on Easter and Christmas or whatever. But, um, the, like I'm definitely far from a perfect Catholic and, um, you know, continuously growing in, in my spirit on a daily basis. But um, it's it's something that if if you put effort into it, you're you're gonna reap every reward um, you know of of how strong you will you will be from one day to the next. And um, you know, I, I've I've actually started a foundation um, that supports veterans, but it's, it's called, um, it's called play the next play. And so that's kind of like the mindset is like, as a Catholic, like, you know, play the next play, whatever the next step is, just keep going, keep moving forward and, you know, continue to, um, refocus your, your thoughts on, um, on Jesus and your faith itself. And it's, it's, there's, there's, there's no, bad play that ruins a game it's letting one bad play ruin 10 plays so mm. um, having that short-term memory of okay get back on track get back on track and then eventually you're going to start stacking those days together and um, you know I know that's a, a little bit of a of a correlation to, to football specifically but it, it definitely applies so um, yeah I appreciate you guys having me on and, and uh, you got to send me your address because I got a couple uh, re uh, really tough and strong rosaries for you guys. To All, send right. To you All right. <laughs> <laughs> we will pray that rosary. And uh, so we'll, yeah, thanks again, Ben. This is awesome. And uh, Randy, why don't you uh, lead us out with prayer? I'd love to. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for this time together and the sharing with Ben. We ask your blessing on Ben and his family who's in the process of moving to Denver. We pray for Ben's team that he get to know his fellow coaches and, and team members and that the Broncos have a good year this year. We pray for Ben's witness and we pray for all those in podcast land who might be listening to this podcast that somehow something that they heard would lead them closer to you. And as always, we pray for the intercession of Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother Holy Mary, of God, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. So All right, friends. Yeah, thank you guys so much.